myself, should I have one thing that does both functions or should I have two separate things? It's probably good to have one thing that does those functions, to share the code to as great a degree as you can. All right. Think about if a new field were to be added to the uh, faculty table. You know, if I make it two different pages, then that's twice the work. I have to add it to the insert, and I have to add it to the to the add or the uh, the change. So ideally, I'm going to want a you know one page that does does it all. All right. So. The page, though, has to be smart enough to know what mode to go into. Now, we played around with the modes last time, if you remember. If you remember, we said there's three different modes. There is, uh, there is uh, insert, read-only, and edit. All right, read-only, insert, and edit. So this page, we want to be in edit mode for the edit. For this page, we want to be in insert mode. Now, we saw how we could set the default to go into one of those modes, right? We saw how we could make the default mode edit. How can we make, how can we change that to be insert? Can we change it to be in, in insert mode? Yeah, right? So it's, it's just another property of an object on the page. And we know that we can write code to change the properties of a page. Right? We've seen that back since the first lab, right? Or the second lab, anyhow. We can make some things visible and some things invisible depending on certain conditions. Right? Therefore, we certainly can change the mode of a details view. If we know, you know, we know the object. We can figure out what the property is. All right. Now the question is: Is how does this page know what mode it's going to be in? Based on the which link was clicked. Okay. True. But this link is something like this. Faculty. Well, let me get the exact name so I'm not. I'm mistyping it. Faculty DET ASPX. Is that the only thing that's on that link? Is that the only is that the entire link name for this person? Question mark. Right. We also have to pass the ID. So it would be if it was is nothing or is not nothing. Exactly. So these links on the grid know which person to pull up based on the ID that we're passing. And so on down the line. What ID are we going to pass if we're in ad mode? Zero. is a possibility. But we're not going to pass. We just won't pass an ID. All right? So, the link if they're in add mode is going to be simply to faculty det aspx. So, both of those pages are linked, or both of these links link to faculty det. One of them, though, passes an ID. The other one doesn't. Ah. Do you think we can use that to determine whether or not to go into edit mode or insert mode? Absolutely. All right. Let's see how to do it. Let's, let's make it so. Um, but we've done our planning, right? We might, we might not know exactly how to do it, but we, we have an idea of our general approach. And that's sort of what I mean about design, you know? Take some time to think what you want to do first, because if you just sat down coding, I hesitate to, to think if you would be able to come up with uh, this kind of solution, right? You're liable to try all sorts of different things, all right? But to spend some time to think about it, decide, ask the questions that you asked, one or two pages. Well, you know, gee, two pages, that seems like an awful lot of work, so no, I'd rather 
do one page and two pages. All right, so one page. Well, what does that mean then? Well, it means that, that the page is going to have to be in different modes, depending on some circumstances. Well, what circumstances? Well, how do I know if I'm in an insert or a delete or, or an edit? Well, an edit, I'm going to give an ID number. What ID number am I going to give for an, oh, I'm not going to give an, oh, okay. I can use that to hook in. So let's go and let's, let's, let's make these changes. We're going to do it in a couple passes. We might not be perfect the first pass, but we'll sort of spiral in on our solution. So let's go here, and let's go into, make sure I'm looking at the right pages. Okay. So let's go into faculty MNT, and let's add the link. to be <clears throat> something like add faculty I want the URL to be oh navigate URL to be faculty det dot ASPX So I added that link. I'm going to go into the faculty DET page. And I'm going to, first of all, get rid of the deletes. Because we don't want to delete in this case. All right. And I'm going to go and I'm going to make this details view have a default view of edit. Right? Because we had said we want to go right into edit mode. Uh, if, if you've chosen to, to edit um, a person. All right. So let's see how this works. We're not going to be all the way there yet, but let's just get an idea of, of how it works. So we click on this. Here is our grid. We click on this link. Up comes Blanchard, and they're already in edit mode, right? So I can go here and I can change something about that and click update. It updates it and returns to the grid. So that part works. I can click on Blanchard. If I click cancel, ideally I like to return back to the grid without making the changes if I hit cancel. So that's one thing that we're not quite there yet on. That's something we're going to have to address. I didn't mean to close that. Let me go back and run it again. What happens when I click the add link there? I get a blank page. Why do I get a blank page? You're not calling another page with that link yet. You're calling it just no ID number. Right. I'm calling the page, but I haven't supplied an ID number yet. So the default for that page is to go into edit mode. Edit of what? edit of the faculty person that has the ID that I'm passing on the query string. What if I don't pass an ID on the query string? It's going to go into edit mode. It's going to try to go into edit mode for a faculty person that doesn't exist, that it can't find. Therefore, blank screen. So, this obviously isn't right. How do we want it to work instead? We want it to go into add mode if there's no query, string, element of faculty ID. All right?
And then the query string, that's called key. So notice if we add it, our URL says <coughs> if we're in edit mode, it says faculty D key equals three and everything appeared the way we wanted it to. If we go into insert mode, notice nothing on the query string. All right. So someone described to me what we want to do. First of all, where do we want to, where do we want to put this code? We want to put it somewhere in faculty DET. Where in faculty DET? Code behind. The code behind. Where in the code behind? <coughs> page load. The page load of that. This is something we want to do right off the bat, right? Right off the bat, we know whether we want to be in edit or insert mode. How do we know that? We know that based on whether there's a key value or not. All right? So, right off the bat, we do that. What's our if statement going to look like? Maybe not the precise syntax, but what will it approximately look like? Okay. Then this. It'll be something along those lines. I probably will test to see if the key is an empty string. And if it's an empty string, then I'll go into insert mode. So, let's go here. And I'll go into the page load event here. Oops. And I will say, if. Where do you think the query string lives? Oh, that's a funny question. Remember I said there's a couple of objects that are present in virtually every server-side language? You recall what those objects were? Well, what does, what does server-side scripting do? The client sends a request, the server sends a response. So, in almost every server-side language, there's a re request object and a response object. All right? Request is less than well, an empty string. Well, right. Well, we'll get to that in a second. Now, since this is coming from the browser to the server, we know that it's part of the request object. All there's, right? There's no special um, variable declaration that has to have in creation and declaration. It's For already, what? It's, it's already in a default. For what? The request. Yeah, the request object is part of the framework. Okay. You get that. You don't need to define that. That's a built-in uh, object. So I can say if request dot query string, because there's actually a lot of pieces of the request. All right. I can find out what browser the person's using. I can find out... Um, something about their cookies. I can find out um, headers, which from that I can maybe find out like where they're from. Have you ever noticed like for example if you go to certain places it will show you like Cleveland area news even though you haven't put in that you're in Cleveland. Well it can get that from the header or the request approximately where you're from. But we're interested in the query string. So again, that request object contains a lot of stuff, but what we're particularly interested in is the query string. What about the query string are we interested in? We are interested in the key item on the query string. So if that equals to an empty string, then I want to go into add mode. And what's that property? Well, it's on the details view. Details view 1. Let's see here. I hope I don't pass it up. Oh. I did pass it off. Default mode. 
equals insert. So now let's go and try this and see if this works. There I am. I'm in ad mode. And I can go in and type in and insert, and away they go. Now, if you wanted to pretty that up with a label that designated you were an ad, then in insert mode, you could, in that same spot, do a label. Exactly. You could say, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could, you could, yeah, you could, you could make it visible or invisible. You could have one label and set the text to something else, and so on. Do notice one thing <clears throat> as we're doing this. Notice that there's no drop down for faculty rank in add mode. There was in edit mode. Why is that? Well. If we look at that, there actually is a different insert template than edit template. That's kind of a pain, right? Because typically when you're inserting something, you probably want the same rules as when you're editing it. But hey, that's the cards that you're dealt, all right? So you got to make it work. So if you want to drop down both an insert and edit mode, you have to um, go in and create a drop-down for insert and edit mode. The good news is, is we've already defined a data source. So we don't have to redefine the data source. We just need to define a drop-down for insert mode and uh, hook it to that same data source. So I'll go into the insert item template and remove that, drag over the drop-down, choose data source, And let it what uh, that was the display field is Frank description or faculty rank description and the data field is faculty rank. Then I have to make sure the data bindings are squared away. And here's an interesting thing, and I think I talked about this that for no good reason that's disabled. I can't tell you why. If that ever happens, what you do is, if you can't get to the binding for selected value, go into custom binding whoops, and say bind, and then the name of the field that you want to bind to. So it's weird, but again, that's one of those things that just periodically seems to happen, that that is disabled. I've had it where Thursday it was disabled. I go in to look at it again on Tuesday, same application, same computer presumably, and it's enabled. I, I, I have no explanation for why. With what you just input, the F rank? Yeah. Was it just an end quote, or was there something that you put after that? Uh, I put in... Um, I put in bind, parenthesis, quote, F rank, parenthesis, or F rank, quote, and then parenthesis. And again, that says where we're putting the data. So now that we, we should have a drop down in add mode as well. So if I go in here into add faculty, it saves them as an instructor. Now, we're not 100% complete yet. We should do and put drop downs in for the location ID, both in edit and add mode. And we should make sure our validation is there for both edit and add mode. Again, just because you put um, validation in insert mode doesn't mean that, or, or doesn't mean that, that edit mode is covered. You have to go in and put um, the validation also in edit mode. 
So anything you do to a, a, an edit template, assuming that you want the insert template to behave the same, you have to duplicate that change. Small, small cost for all the functionality that these, these controls give you. I um, want to talk about one more thing um, on this, and that is I don't like the way the cancel works. Okay? In other words, if I go and update cancel, I would like it to take me back to the list. Same thing here. I'd like to go back to the list if I hit cancel. How do I do that? Well, I can't put code in the deleted, inserted, or updated event, right? Because the cancel keeps those events from happening, right? If I cancel, I'm not updating. I'm not inserting. I'm not deleting. What I am doing, though, is I'm changing the status of that details view. So I can write code on the mode changing event. <coughs> and I can say if e dot cancel, and what that means is, is if I'm canceling out of something, then I can redirect back to the grid. And that will apply, apply to both of them because if you notice, this is in the mode changing event. So there's not a mode changing specific to insert and a mode changing specific to delete. That mode changing fires any time the mode of that grid view changes. All right. So if it changes and we're canceling, then get out of Dodge and redirect to, to the grid. So let's, let's test that out, make sure I'm not, not all wet on this. If I go in here, click Add Faculty, and click Cancel. Whoa.
so far, like all the inserts, updates, and deletes we've done have been based on either a grid view or a details view. Sometimes you want to create your own form. You don't want to use the built-in functionality for whatever reason. That will be our topic uh, on Tuesday of next week. We don't really have time to start it now. Um, that's where it is. I do apologize for the confusion. I have to say I'm a bit flummoxed on why some of these update issues are happening. Um, I do have a thought of how to fix it, but I do not want to divulge that until I've tested it out. All right? So we'll play, I'll play around with testing it out, and, and we'll see, and again, if I have something that, that I think is, is uh, worthwhile for everyone to hear, I will post it. All right. We'll see you in lab. Thank you very much.